Welcome to lesson 1 part 3 of the Adobe Animate tutorial series looking at frame by frame animation. In this lesson you will learn the basics of using the timeline, you will gain an understanding of what frame by frame animation is and how it works, you will learn what keyframes are and how to use them and you will look at what the term frames per second means in film, TV and animation. Let's begin. In the previous video, we finished by drawing a skateboarder and saved the file. You will need to load this or draw another border now. The first action we will take is renaming the layer in our timeline. We need to double left click on the name layer one and call this layer something meaningful like border. We will examine why this action is important in the next video. Next, it is important to learn how to correctly select objects when animating. You can simply use the selection tool and draw a large box around your drawing, but this can cause a problem if you do not cover the whole character. As you can see here, if I select only half the character, I will split him in half when I drag him. The best way to select everything is to click on the keyframe in the timeline. Notice the character is now fully highlighted. This method will be important when we have multiple layers to our animations, so try to remember to use it. Let's move our character off the stage to the wing on the left hand side of the screen. In order to animate, we need to create keyframes. A keyframe is where we want to adjust or move our character. One keyframe represents one still image. When we add another keyframe and make a tiny change to this position, we now have two still images. When you have many still images, each with a character in a different position, then you play through these frames at speed, you have animation. Let's see how that works. On the timeline, left click on the small box that is frame 2 to highlight it. Next, select the insert menu, click timeline and select keyframe. Now, Using your mouse or the arrow keys on your keyboard, move your border a little way to the right. To add the next keyframe, try right clicking on frame 3 and select insert keyframe. Again, nudge your character a little to the right. Finally, without clicking at all, try pressing the function key F6 on your keyboard and another keyframe should appear. Again, nudge your character to the right. You can cycle through the frames of your animation using the red slider bar, but one problem is knowing how far you have moved your character between frames. To determine this, we use the onion skin tool. This will put two square brackets on your timeline. Adjusting these to the left and to the right will allow you to see the frames behind and ahead of where you've animated. When you have more animation frames, the right hand bracket is very useful if you need to make small adjustments to your animation when you've already animated many frames. I am now going to make my border move across the screen by adding keyframes and moving my character. I will use small movements and some larger ones to demonstrate how speed of a character can be controlled. Smaller movements make your character move slowly but smoothly. Larger movements make your character move quickly but jerkily. Try it out for yourself. If I apply the onion skin tool to show the whole animation, you can see where the character movement is closer together and where it is further apart. Let's now play the animation and see what this looks like. To play your movie, go to the control menu and first check that in the test movie option, there is a tick next to the option in animate. Once this is done, click the button which says test to see your animation in action. As you can see here, my border moves slower and quicker in different places. I advise you to experiment with this effect to get used to it. If you test your movie and it doesn't repeat like mine does, go to control and select the option loop playback. Finally, we need to examine the concept of frames per second. When you watch a film at the cinema, the film is projected to the screen at 24 frames per second. This means that it is cycling through 24 still pictures each second 
to create the illusion of movement. In Adobe Animate, we can adjust the frames per second here. Let's try playing our movie at 15 frames per second. You can see it is a little slower and a little jerkier. If we change this and play it at 5 frames per second, it is slower and jerkier still. It is advisable to try to animate at 24 frames per second, but you can create interesting effects by animating at different speeds. Practice the techniques shown in this video, and I thank you for watching. See you in the next lesson.